and I feel like shouting joy to the world. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask me to stand close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the children in the tender care and fill us for heaven to live with me there. It's Christmas the angels are singing and I know the Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending, He. Of the worlds that are, that have been, and that future ye shall see. Evermore and evermore. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship for Spearfish United Methodist Church. From Luke 2, verses 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that, the, that a census would be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own hometown to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. The reading is from Jeremiah 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make it righteous branch sprout from David's line. 
He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. Today we light the candle of expectation and hope. May it remind each and every one of us of God's great promise to us. He is our hope. He is our redeemer. He is our Savior. Father, during the Advent season, may we be reminded of your promises to us and your fulfillment of them. Help us to prepare our lives for his Advent within us. In the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen.
The reading tonight from Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. In the wilderness, prepare the way for our Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today we relight the candle of hope and expectation. Let this candle remind us of the great hope we have in Christ the Messiah and in God's promises. As we light the candle of preparation and peace, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. prayer. Father, guide us in confession of our sins. We know that in the greatness of your love, you have promised to forgive us. Cleanse us as we prepare our lives for the coming of Jesus again. This we ask in his name. Amen.
Today's reading is from Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 55. Mary said, My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I am not important. From now on, all people call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. His name is holy. He shows his mercy to those who have respect for him, from parent to child, down through the years. He has done mighty things with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their deepest thoughts, and he has brought down rulers from their thrones. But he has lifted up people who are not important. He has filled those who are hungry with good things, but he has sent those who are rich away empty. He has helped people of Israel who serve him. He has always remembered to be kind to Abraham and his children down through the years. He has done it just as he said to our people of long ago. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We relight the candle of hope and expectation, recalling God's promise to send a Savior. As we relight the candle of preparation and peace, remember the voice crying out in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now we relight the candle of proclamation and joy. May our hearts be filled with the joy of his coming. Father, we are filled with joy because we have hope and peace that you have sent your son for all, the, that, for all that believe. Help us to be the voices that proclaim grace and truth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Still proceeding, God. 
And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth place peace amaining, among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Today we relight the candles of expectation and hope recalling God's promise. The candle of preparation remembering the voice crying in the wilderness urging the people to prepare the way of the coming Lord, and the candle of proclamation, reminding us of the joy found in him. Now we light the candle of revelation and peace. We celebrate the announcement of the coming King and the greatness of God's love revealed through the Christ child. Father, we thank you for revealing yourself through Jesus, and we praise you for the greatness of your love. Help us to share your peace with others and live our lives more like Christ every day. In his name we pray. Amen.
as we prepare for the message, would you open your heart and mind in just a moment of silence with me? Amen. Would you believe me if I said to you that Christmas is the most dangerous time of the year? Christmas is perhaps the most dangerous holiday, festival, event that we celebrate in our Christian year. You know, for the first 300 years of Christian history, we didn't celebrate Christmas. We celebrated Easter, the power of the resurrection. That was the most dangerous. That was the most life-filled. That was the most amazing moment in our year, and still is. But then, as Christianity became more mainstream, there was another element of, of Christianity that entered in that said, no, 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 we, we need to recognize Christ came to earth in the first place. I'm gonna tell you that this is dangerous for two reasons. Now, this is a book. The name of it is Daily Light. I don't even remember where I picked it up. But, but here it is, and, and the thing that is so amazing is that on the inside cover and in the back cover, the owner of this book, whose name is never here, it's like, it's like a family photo album. And it is just so cool to see the pictures. Well, I would take a guess, and I would be pretty sure that the one on the title page, a young man in his 20s, that's, that's him. This book is from 1906, and so what that would mean is that the, the young man who owned this probably was born in the, in the mid-1880s. The cool thing is that he kept this for years, for decades, and there are pictures. Right next to him, there is a baby picture. And when you look back, there's another, another picture of him in a wagon. And here's a picture of him. I mean, you can tell, facial features, hair, it's him. And here he is as an older man in his 50s, 60s. But the photo that, that so grabs me is this one. It's the one that is his baby shot. His baby picture. When that photo was taken back in the 1880s, nobody knew what this boy was gonna turn out to be. Nobody knew what he was going to grow up to be. Nobody knew if he would get married. No one knew if he would have children. No one knew what his job would, was going to be. No one knew what the impact that he was gonna have on this earth was going to be. He was just a baby and oh, he was a cute baby at that. But then he grew up and all of those things unfolded. His high school years, his college years, his graduation years, those pictures are in here. His grandparents, his parents, those pictures are in here. His wife, I'm just positive that those pictures are in here. It is so amazing to see this and his life unfolded. We have that same Thing that has been given to us tonight. And on Christmas, although we don't have the, the photograph, we have the image. We have the image of this baby born in a manger. This is incredibly dangerous. Christmas is fabulously dangerous because what can happen is that we look at the, the baby in the manger and our hearts are warmed. Now, it is incredibly important to recognize the, the power of this festival because we need to acknowledge God came to this earth in physical form. God in the flesh came in the form of a baby born into poverty, born as a refugee, born into homelessness, born with nothing and yet with everything. The problem, the danger, is that we stay with the image of the baby. Oh, look at this baby. 
And he was cute, wasn't he? The problem is that the baby can stay the baby. The danger is that we don't realize that the baby grew up to be a boy and then a teen and then a man and then a savior. The power of our faith is in twofold. It is God come to earth and we celebrate Christmas, but then it is the power of crucifixion and resurrection and we celebrate Easter. But in between this, you and I are invited to participate, to be present in the life of this baby, this boy, this man. There's a danger. The danger, first of all, is when we only see the baby. And if we get stuck on that image, then we never gain the faith that we need. We never gain the strength. We never flex the muscles of our faith. But there's a second danger, and this is an amazing danger, and it is a wonderful danger. The danger that comes when we say, there was a baby, and he grew, and he became preacher, teacher, healer, Messiah. He became God's messenger. The danger lies in the fact that we do believe in that. The danger lies in the fact that if we commit our lives to that Savior, then we ourselves can be in danger. If we live the way Jesus lived, if we practice what Jesus practiced, if we speak what Jesus spoke, if we act what Jesus acted, if we do what Jesus did, there is a danger in that. And oh my gosh, it is the most amazing and wonderful danger. May it be, may it be my friends, as we celebrate the coming of the Christ child, that you remember the growth and the maturity of a Savior now living in us. May it be, in Jesus' name, amen. became flesh, John 1, 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. 
In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And with all praise, glory, and honor in his holy name forever and ever. Amen. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On this most holy day, we light all four candles in the Advent wreath, and we are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of his coming. And now we light the center candle, the Christ candle, and we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty God. Oops, I messed up. Scott, I messed up. Keep going. I'm after this. Okay. Gracious and mighty King. We celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day. Grant us the spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of his character every day. In his name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to light your candle. The power of that one light, that one light that shatters the darkness, the power of those words in John that says that the light has come into the world and the world has not put it out. This is amazing. One light shatters the darkness. Light your candle. Join me for this one light 
and your one light, and their one light, all together light the world.
receive this blessing. May you go always as a people who have been named by God and claimed by God, so that you can serve with all the life and love that you have in your life. Go in the name of God, our Creator. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one come to be with us tonight. Go in the name of the Holy Spirit, who is our guide, and as you go, may it always be in God's peace. Go.